Hello there. In this video, I'm going to give you seven reasons why I collect silver. Now, this isn't financial advice. It's just some information that might get you into the hobby. So the hobby of silver collecting, which is known as stacking, is actually just a really good hobby to have. Hobbies are therapeutic, they are relaxing, they give you something to do, gives you something to aim for. It's just fun, enjoyable, good for your mental health. Be that stamp collecting or autograph collecting or silver collecting, it is a worthwhile hobby. But silver in particular is a good hobby because silver is so pretty and shiny. Okay, we're not magpies, but I just like the look of silver, and that's one of the reasons I collect it. So next on my list is the value of silver. So silver has historically been a store of value throughout the centuries of human existence. Actually, that makes me sound like I think that the human race started in the last few hundred years. Well, I'm not saying that. Anyway, coins have been made of silver for years and years. And that's because even early civilizations realized that silver had a sort of intrinsic value. Silver is a, a precious metal that is available in limited quantities on planet Earth, and it can only be mined at a certain rate. There are costs associated with mining it, so that limits the rate of mining as well. And also, silver actually has practical applications. So it's used in many industrial processes. It's also used for jewelry as well. And so a combination of the limited supply and the clear defined demand for silver is what gives silver its value. And so that means that when you're collecting silver, you're not just collecting an object that could be worthless in the future. You are collecting something which should have some value forever. So another way that silver is special and more similar to gold in this regard than other metals is that actually silver is remarkably unreactive, which means it doesn't tarnish that easily. And of course that would have been why it would have been used for coins, because you don't really want coins in your pocket that can rust. The other thing is that silver is quite dense as well. So even though these coins are remarkably small, they actually weigh one troy ounce and they feel very heavy for their size. And both of those things sort of add up to having something that, yes, just feels precious. Now I've got a small selection of items here. I've got some coins. I've got a Britannia coin here that's valued at two pounds. Um, this is the monetary value. I could spend this in a shop if I wanted to. Um, in actual fact, this coin is worth over 50 pounds so I'd be a bit stupid to do that. This is an American coin. I can't remember what it's called now. It's got a bull on it. It's buffalo, that's it, it's a buffalo coin. Um, yeah, so these are collector's coins essentially, but they do have some monetary value, I think. Uh, but we've also got a spoon here. It is a souvenir spoon. This is actually only 80% silver, which you can tell because it's got 800 written on the back here. You really, need to learn the markings for silver if this is a hobby that you do want to get into. Um, and just because it's got a number on the back doesn't necessarily mean that it's a percentage uh, silver content. Well, this, this is definitely an 80% silver spoon for uh, burn. And this is a ladies brooch, which I'm not going to wear because I don't typically wear ladies jewellery. But this is just a small selection and example of the kind of things you can get if you're going to collect silver. You're not confined to just coins. There are also other forms of jewellery. You can get bars of silver, great big bars. You can get great big kilogram coins of silver. You can get ornaments, so, you know, a silver horse or a silver dog, whatever it is you're interested in. You can get bowls. You can get letter openers, whatever you want. You can probably get it made out of silver, probably even an iPhone if you look really hard. Now, as it stands, an ounce of silver is worth about 20 pounds here in the UK, whereas an ounce of gold is worth, I think, about 1,400 pounds, maybe slightly less now. And all this adds up to is that silver is cheap to buy. 
you can get a lot more for your money if you're going to collect silver than you would if you were buying gold. And obviously this is good from a collector's point of view because if you're collecting silver, your collection is going to be bigger. Now so far the things in this list have primarily been concerned with, well, just collecting silver because it's a nice metal. But actually there are some potential financial reasons you might want to collect silver. If you look at the ratio between the price of gold and silver, what you find is that at the moment gold is much more expensive compared to silver than it has been in the past. And what you would expect to happen eventually is that the price of silver will catch up to some extent with the price of gold, not anywhere near the value of gold, I hasten to add, but the ratio between them will get a lot closer than it is now. And at that point, professional investors will do things like sell their silver and buy into gold so that when the ratio then increases again, they can sell their gold. Um, it's a kind of investment strategy. And because of that ratio as it stands at the moment, a lot of people think that silver is really, really underpriced and represents a good investment. There are some sort of, I don't know if you want to call them conspiracy theorists, because I mean, they may be right, but people who say that actually the value of silver is artificially subdued or held down um, by the paper markets. Believe it or not, you can actually buy electronic silver online. So you can go on websites where you buy silver and you don't actually own it, but you do kind of own it. So you can, you know, buy at one price and sell at another. But the fact is that this so-called paper market has created, um, well, more silver than there is actually in the whole planet. Essentially a bubble that is artificially keeping the price of silver down because it's inflating the supply when actually there isn't more supply. I hope I've explained that clearly. But yes, the price is low and slightly related to that, people tend to buy silver as a hedge against massive disasters. So you may have noticed at the start of the recent pandemic, gold and silver shot up quite a lot because people start to panic that currencies um, and economies are going to collapse. And when things like that do happen, the only kind of way out of it is to revert to the things that have historic and known values, and they are precious metals. So people buy gold and silver to protect their wealth. It's a hedge for if things go horribly wrong. And so finally on my list, I have, well, it's, it's quite a good way of saving, which might seem a little bit odd. So if you put money in your bank account at the moment because interest rates are so low, you won't really make much money from your savings. Of course, if you invest carefully um, and sensibly in the stock market and other investment opportunities, you can make a lot of money. But an alternative is to collect silver. If you have your own silver collection, sure, it doesn't attract interest, so it doesn't grow as a matter of course over your period of owning it. But actually, if you bought silver 10 years ago, you would have made probably more from purchasing silver then than you would have done if you just stuck your money in a bank account. So that's worth considering as well. Now, I have made videos in the past talking about why gold is also a good thing to collect, and I do collect some gold as well. Um, I'll leave a link to that down below in case you want to check that out. If you think I've missed out any reasons why silver is a good thing to collect, please let me know because I'm willing to learn and I can always make another video in future on this topic. Anyway, thank you very much to my loyal Patreons who are scrolling down the screen now. Thank you also to George Foote, Magnanimous Meg, HB, Jennifer Jones, and Jim McCaig, who are all very generous Patreons. Thank you very much. I don't know why I call them Patreons. It's patrons, isn't it? It's because the system's called Patreon. Never mind. Anyway, thanks for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it, and I shall see you next time for another one.